Nema tako reći vozača koji nije čuo za markiranje goriva, a ovih dana radi se i kontrola tih markera na pumpama u skladištima, koliko su ti rezultati dobri i da li su zadovoljni sa sadašnjim rezultatima, to je pitanje za našeg današnjeg gosta. Stigao je iz daleke Amerike, iz firme Authentix. Inače, gospodin Kevin McKenna je predsjednik sektora za naftu i gaz. Dobrodošli, gospodine Kevin. Hvala. Recite mi, evo počelo je kontrola markiranja i kontrola markera u samom gorivu na benzinskim stanicama. Kakvi su rezultati prema vašem utisku već na početku ovdje u Srbiji? I, I think the results we've seen we're the team members are not surprised by, but I think we surprised a lot of people with how effective the program was and how quickly we saw very good results on the program. And it's been very encouraging here in Serbia because you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, we're very pleased to see the office of the prime minister publish the results and claim the success of the program where we were able to see uh, very sharp increases in excise tax collection showing the, the efficacy of this program. Uh, the figures that have been quoted to date are the fact that the government has been able to collect over 35 million euros and additional taxes due to the implementation of this program. So we think we have some really good positive proof points of the success of this program already. Gospodine Kevin, kako su iskustva na početku kontrole markiranja u drugim zemljama bila i koliko je bilo nepoverenja u markiranje od strane distributera i vlasnika automobila potrošača i kako ste vi to rešili? So we, we usually see results very quickly and it's typically tied to when the program is really made known and you start seeing enforcement actions. So what we're usually talking about is very quickly, as we've seen here in Serbia, usually within the first six months of the program, you'll see some market increases in tax collection, as well as a substantial increase in the quality of the fuel supply. Uh, a good, very good example that I can think of is the country of Kenya, where we've been running a program there with our partner here, SGS, Um, since 1998, and in that country, in the first year of the program, they were able to collect $70 million dollars in additional excise taxes because of the program. And as you can imagine, $70 million dollars is a lot of money for any country, particularly a, a poorer country such as Kenya. So a lot of the benefits from the program go further than just the quality of the fuel supply. We're able to help these countries uh, fund needed programs collect more tax revenue and help put a dent in some of the organized crime that may be occurring in those countries. As far as mistrust with some of the fuel users, distributors, car drivers, uh, you know, we have a number of things on our side that have helped us that we've been able to communicate on our programs. One is, is the markers we use are made out of the same basic components as the fuel itself. So what we're doing is not going to impact the quality of the fuel. Combine that with the fact that we mark at very low marking levels. We're talking about parts per billion. So if you think of that in terms of one drop of water, that's like putting one drop of water in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So the fact that we use something that's made of the same components of the fuel and we combine that at very low marking levels really solidifies our position that we're not going to affect the quality of the fuel. On top of this, we do have hard evidence. We've had tests run. So I can tell you since 2002, we've been marking major branded fuels in the United States. And before these fuels were put to market with our marker, they went through a lot of testing to ensure that we were not affecting the quality of fuel. This included both laboratory testing as well as testing on actual vehicles where our fuel marked with our marker and without marker was tested on a fleet of taxis over a period of several months. And the results of that were very conclusive that our markers do not affect the quality of the fuel and they do not do any kind of incremental harm to human health or the environment. 
Verujemo da vam je ovaj razgovor izuzetno zanimljiv. Zaista to markiranje je izazvalo veliko interesovanje. Nastavit ćemo ovaj razgovor, napravit ćemo kraću pauzu. Verujem da ta kraća pauza odgovara i našem gostu, gospodinu Kevinu. Pogledajte šta smo još pripremili za današnje izdanje, a onda nastavljamo priču o markiranju goriva. Nastavljamo razgovor o markiranju goriva. Sa nama je i dalje u studiju gospodin Kevin McKenna. U Srbiji čitavu kontrolu i markiranje praktično organizuju SGS i tržna inspekcija. Kako je to u drugim zemljama? Ko to radi u drugim zemljama? Well, we're currently marking in major programs in 12 countries around the world. And uh, I can tell you that our preferred partner around the world has been SGS. So the majority of those countries we work with SGS. Uh, there are some rare occasions where we have actually a government agency that participates and does the inspection operations. Very similar to how we're doing here in Serbia where we have SGS but we also have government inspectors that accompany SGS on the inspections and as part of the controls of the program. Da li ste vi zadovoljni sa onim što radi SGS? Nano inspekt, tržna inspekcija. Da li po vašem mišljenju to dobro rade ovdje u Srbiji? Yes, absolutely. I think we have a great sense of teamwork and cooperation here. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the results of the program are speaking for themselves. The fact that we've seen such tremendous success and additional tax collection in such a short period of time. Zašto je ta primjena nano markera sada trenutno samo u Srbiji. Zašto je nema u drugim zemljama u Evropi? Ima li nekih posebnih razloga što je to samo u Srbiji i na koji način se to u drugim zemljama radi? The fact is though other countries in Europe are marking their fuel. They're marking their fuel with dyes. Uh, you know, since 2002 in Europe the euro marker has been used to mark heating oil so that it can be identified uh, where it's improperly used as a road fuel. Now, I can say that uh, I, I think the reason Serbia is the only country right now with an advanced technology solution is the fact that the rest of Europe, I don't think, is caught up with the fact that the dye is not enough. Uh, when we're talking about the amount of money that's at stake here, criminals get very sophisticated and they have a lot of resources at their disposal. And I think Europe is now just starting to realize that the dye is not enough to protect their fuel as the criminals have figured out ways to remove it. The criminals have figured out other ways to take advantage of price differences in fuels. And you can see it often in the press, in the news. You know, I've seen earlier this year reports about of upwards of four billion dollars being lost due to fuel smuggling within Europe. So I, I think Serbia is, is really a, a pioneer and is leading the way for Europe in, in, in implementing a more advanced technology solution where we're using covert nanotechnology markers to address the problem and to stay one step ahead of the criminals. Now we do see other countries that are starting to catch up. I think a good example is the United Kingdom where they had a problem in Northern Ireland where the dyes that were being used were recognized as being ineffective. And they're just in the process now of implementing a new program there where they're going to use a more sophisticated marker. There are other countries in Europe that are starting the process of issuing requests for information in the tender process to procure the technology. So I, I think many other countries will be soon behind Serbia in, in, in following your example in this, this quite remarkable fuel program. Da li je postojalo pokušaja i da li je bilo pokušaja da se napravi neki lažni marker, da se nekako prevare svi oni koji učestvuju u procesu koji ste vi promovisali u Srbiji kad je reč o markiranju? Uh, in Serbia, no, we've not seen any attempts thus far. We have seen attempts in other countries where we have similar programs and it will typically revolve around someone trying to steal the marker. So the marker security is extremely important in the program and it's something we've taken very, very seriously here in Serbia. So I think we have a very good security program in place, both the physical security of the marker as well as a follow-up to track and have a very good auditing system to make sure that every drop of marker is properly placed in the field and accounted for. Dakle, sudeći po ovome što smo čuli, zaista čovjek može biti siguran u to markiranje i može verovati da takvim obeležavanjem goriva se u stvari sprečava 
prodaja onoga što nije legalno, onoga što se pojavljuje sa sivog tržišta, time štedi i država, vozači su sigurniji u to gorivo, pa u dobroj meri i u kvalitet i ako je verovati gospodinu Kevinu u svemu ovome što je ispričao, Jeste neka budućnost kad je reč o nafti, naftnim derivatima na tržištu Srbije i verujemo da će se kasnije kontrolom kvaliteta goriva sve to potvrditi i da ćemo konačno imati pravi red na tržištu naftne i naftnih derivata u Srbiji. Gospodine Kevin, hvala vam što ste bili naš gost, želim vam puno uspeha i verujemo da će sve ovo što radite zaista dati prave rezultate na zadovoljstvo svih u Srbiji. Hvala vam. Hvala.